everybody, it's right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Renown because it just came out with another briefing. This one is called Briefing 47, Game Design Animations. Let's just go ahead and hop into it. Starts off with saying, uh, attention officers, welcome to our 47th newsletter. This week we'll be taking a look at some of our work that makes the suspects, civilians, and your fellow officers feel more alive. It's a subject that is unfortunately not talked about very often in comparison to its cousins, AI, effects, and textures, despite being just as important or depending on who you talk to. The animations of both the player character and the AI in Ready or Not help contribute to the feeling of unease as you approach a suspect that hasn't either surrendered or revealed their intentions. The shifting of their feet, the way that they look around the room, even how they reach into their jacket or pants to retrieve something all contribute to these feelings. For today's newsletter, we consulted with Rei Haku, one of Void Interactive's animators whose background and skill lend very well to the atmosphere of Ready or Not, one of the architects around many of the recent and incredibly well-made trailers. Um, I thought ready or not was using mocap when did they stop doing that or are they still doing that i don't know but anyways animations by rehaku part of the reason why animation doesn't get much discussion is because there's nothing really mind-blowing to discuss it's unique in some sense because gameplay animations can get weirdly specific and a lot of stuff feels invisible to the player until it's not there and it's really obvious that it isn't there it isn't like ai or levels where there's amazing videos of their navigation and behavior or pretty screenshots and images to show off oh you guys throwing animation under the bus animating is mostly we're figuring out the time we spent blending the character between two poses and how to turn in place if they're looking around or while they're standing still and doing a neat shuffling animation right here they have their first gif here you got the first guy on the right that is standing there that's his idle animation i guess or maybe when he's like hunkered behind a wall ready to strike the middle one he has this walking animation as if it kind of looks like he's sneaking a little bit or maybe he's just patrolling and then the one on the far left obviously seems like he definitely hurt something so he's going in to investigate like this looks like he's investigating pose only when he starts running do i think that oh i know someone's there i'm gonna go get him but they're not showing like a running animation which is interesting because the officers don't really run in the game so yeah but anyways underneath this it says demonstration of various npc states instead of walking everywhere with their weapons up they can take it slow with their weapons down as they navigate this is a preview of the movement system that is currently in the game this was a solution to the lack of momentum the npcs have when they move around as they used to not build up any acceleration, an actual person would need to start moving quickly, making them frustrating to fight against and hard to read. This is our method to interpret that into the game, by blending between multiple types of animations, which is a walk, run, and sprint as demonstrated in the first section of the video followed by a walk, and a jog, in the second section of the video. And yes, there is a video down below right here, and we'll take a look at this. There doesn't appear to be any audio, so I guess we'll just watch him like this. Okay, so he's going into a walk, and now he's going into a jog, and now he's going into a full-on sprint, he's running across the room. I was coming back down. Oh, slowing down. Now he's standing still. Okay, cool. So this goes into the second section, I guess, where he's kind of like... He's like skipping right there. Is there a reason why they're doing that, I wonder? I've actually seen, like, suspects, like, skipping around sometimes, and I think that just looks a little odd. I mean, I guess it's one way to get around a room, but it just... Why are you skipping instead of running? You might want to ask like a developer to be like, what's the reason behind suspects randomly skipping? But anyways. So he's walking diagonally, which is cool. Walking backwards, diagonally. Walking backwards. Oh, and now he's skipping backwards. Diagonally backwards. Same thing this way though. Oh no, he's going forward. He's going forward, now he's stopping. Okay, that's how it ends. Alright, cool. Underneath this it says, The way the speeds are interpreted in the actual game is simple. We increment from a 0 to 1 value. 0 being full stop and 1 being at full speed. And the numbers in between 0 and 1 serve as the acceleration. This also gives us a wider range of motion as the strafes were initially only 8 directional. Being able to blend between these directions means that they look more precise during navigation. It's not a very technologically groundbreaking method. It has been around since the early 2000s. Valve uses this for all their games on 
animations in the Source Engine since Half-Life 2, and it helps their game animations achieve a very natural look with such a simple system. Yeah, I think I've seen that. If I remember to put that on the screen, I'll put that on the screen. But moving on here. Under the hood, there are many aspects of game design and development that the general public doesn't see. Along with our newsletter that show off the inspiration behind our levels, we will also be producing more newsletters that go into more detail about things that make Red Your Nut tick. In conclusion, this concludes our 47th briefing. Be sure to tune in next time for more development news. That was pretty cool. Like, even though they're saying that animation isn't, like, sexy or anything like that, I still enjoy seeing what developers do behind the scenes to make things tick, you know what I'm saying? Glad that they showed this off. Although, I am a bit confused because I thought that they were using mocap for a lot of this stuff. But they have an animator? Or maybe it's just, like, one of those animators that uh, adjusts the way that the mocap is. Maybe? I don't know. Because I think the mocap gives you, like, a framework and then you're kind of just, like, adjusting around it. I'm not an animator myself, so I have no idea how this stuff works. I tried to do it, but I was like, man, I just don't have the patience. Pretty interesting. What are your guys' thoughts? Let me know down below. With that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.